Uh, my name is Rafael. I'm a technical account manager in Red Hat, uh, specialized in Ansible. And here's my my friend. So introduce yourself. Hello, my <laughs> name is Jos Manuel. I am in the same team that Rafa. I am an OpenShift team, and I'm happy to be here also. Yeah. Well, we lost this one, but it's fine. Okay. So I will be start talking a little bit about even Driven and Ansible that you, most of you probably already know about it, but yeah. Uh, even driving Ansible is basically a mechanism which is able to listen to different uh, sources and, and perform an, an, an action depending on the, on the event that we receive, okay? So basically, it is uh, observing Depending on the sources that the plugin sources that we configure, it is observing the different things that are happen, and also depending on the source plugin, it was uh, it will uh, listen to the to the specific uh, source, or it will be also sending uh, like a message to th these systems to to evaluate them in the next phase, and depending on the conditions that we uh, configure, it will. Mm, think on a on the better way to to uh, perform then a trigger mechanism wh wh which will uh, trigger a, an automation. Okay, it can be a job template of the Ansible controller. It can be a workflow job template. It can be an Ansible playbook. So depending on the on the on the conditions, it will evaluate the situation and will trigger uh, an automation. Okay, so basically how it works is using the Ansible rulebooks. That is. Uh, Let's say the the a similar thing that a classical Ansible playbook, um, and it is there are two very clear parts here. Okay, the first part is the sources. There are several uh, source plugins which are listed into different, as I said, different systems. In this example, we can see that it is listed into the alert manager, and then we have rules. When we receive uh, an event, if the if the event meets the condition that we have in the in the in the rule, it will trigger in this example, for example, a a, a job template of the Ansible controller who will restart the web server. Okay, so that's it. This is basically uh, how it works. Then. We would like to talk a little bit about OpenShift Data Foundation because this is something a dollar piece of our demo that we will be later. So, Jose uh, Manuel, please. We added OpenShift Data Foundation to this demonstration because it will use as our storage provider. No? So, OpenShift Data Foundation uh, can have the chance to use uh, some storage volumes. Uh, we can use a file, block, and other storage modules. And also, it's included with the OpenShift Platform Plus uh, uh, subscription. It's included in the Essential mode, uh, no additional cost. Okay. Well, also, we added GitOps to this demonstration. Uh, as probably you know, uh, with GitOps, we can uh, describe uh, our environment and we can have a decided state, uh, including GitOps. Uh, we can approve some changes, and after that, a controller will populate them into our cluster. I'm not sure uh, how many of you are familiar with this uh, technology, with GitOps and even Drive and Ansible. Have you used it before, or you only you? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So let's try to show all the things uh, to the people for understand. Okay. So yeah. Go ahead. Yes, we, we target CD. We have uh, our configuration stored in, in a Git repository. And uh, Argo CD, we run uh, automatically some things uh, to populate uh, our desired state into our OpenShift cluster. Yeah. So basically, what we will have here is uh, even driving Ansible, listening to an application which, which is deployed in, in, in OpenShift. Okay. And we will have Argo CD um, deploying the application and also checking that the version that we have in the repository is the same that we have deployed in the in the cluster okay so it's i think it's, it's easy when you see it in action okay yes we we talk basically uh, we have a desired state and the the controller will try to replicate the desired state into our uh, current state 
yeah, so I think it would be easy if we see how it works. So this is a live demo we have prepared. We, hip, uh, we hope it, wor it will work <laughs> because we had some problems before, but let's see. And we don't have a video or something. So, so this is the, the, um, our environment, OK? We have a, a an application, a physical volume in ODF, mounted in OpenShift, OK? We have even Drive-On, even Drive-On Ansible. We have a Lord Manager listening to our application there. We have also ServiceNow, which is an ITS, ITSM uh, system of uh, ticketing and, you know. And we have our repository here in, in Gitea. Gitea is an um, open source uh, Git repository uh, on which we have the code of our application, which is the project there. And we have Argo CD uh, checking for the latest versions of the, of, the, of the application that we have deployed in Gitea, OK? So that will should happen. <coughs> we will fill out the disk of the, the, the physical volume of the, of the application, of our application. So uh, Alert Manager will detect that the disks are almost full, OK? And it will send an alert to the event drive and Ansible, OK? The event drive and Ansible should uh, react to the event and should trigger a job template in the Ansible controller, which should uh, open a ticket in ServiceNow, OK? Once we have the ticket open, even drive and Ansible should as well detect that we have a new ticket open and should trigger the, the mechanism. So we will, <laughs> it will be <laughs> we will download the code of the application. We will add a space to the PVC, and we will upload again. We will commit the the um, the manifest of the PVC to the repository. And in the next stage, Argo should detect the change, should deploy the the new uh, PVC, and at the end. Uh, it should uh, close the <laughs> the ticket, okay, in service now. So there are a lot of steps. I hope it will work. <laughs> Any questions at this point? Is everything clear or is very messy? I don't know. Okay. Okay. So I will take a seat. So uh, this is our OpenShift. I, I will show you a little bit. This is our Ansible Automation Platform, okay? We have some job templates here. Uh, this is even driving Ansible, uh, waiting for events, okay? This is the code, our Git repository, in which we have the PVC here. It's a storage class with 10 gigabytes, okay? We have our service now here, waiting for tickets. This guy is Argo CD. This is our application deployed, so the PVC is here, okay? If you click here, you can see the manifest, 10 gigabytes, as you saw before, OK? And those are the, uh, this is the application, OK? So what I will do is to try to fill the, um, uh, let me, OK. I will enter in the container, which is running the application. Okay, and I will create a big uh, file there. Oh, that's not a good one. Uh, sorry. So the command is. Uh, At this point, we are creating a big file to fill the yeah. the volume, no, and trigger the the alert that will create all the automation. No? But sorry, eight gigabytes and for example rail.img. So let's check that the file is there. Yeah, it's there. If I check the space right now, it should be almost uh, full. Okay. So it will take a little bit to to open shift to, to to I mean to the alert manager to detect the the thing, okay. This is the the metrics dashboard of the of the OpenShift. We have the alerts here. As you can see, we have uh, an alert here configured, which is checking for the PVC usa disk usage. 
and in, in some time it will react okay, to, the, to the alert. In the meantime, because it will take a little bit, I can show you, for example, the, the event driven Ansible, uh, if you don't know how it works, um, it works using uh, a decision environment, which is uh, basically a container file uh, which uh, triggers the Ansible rulebook command and, and the rulebook that we want to execute to, to react to the events and to listen to the, to the alert manager, okay? So this is our decision environment, EDA decision environment. It's in a, it's in a standard registry uh, of containers, it's, uh, it's normal. We have a project that is also in our Gitea. Uh, in which we have the uh, rulebook that we are using. This is our rulebook, okay? So as you can see, we have a listener to the alert manager. We have a listener to the service now because we want to see when an incident is open to react to this incident. And in the case that we have alert manager events, we will meet these conditions. We will open a service now ticket. And in the case that we see, uh, and, and those are the two uh, actions that we will perform depending on the case, okay? In our current case, we, are, we will uh, trigger this workflow. That is a stand up and shift physical volume, okay? So basically, that's it. And also, you have to activate the, the rulebook using this rulebook activations, okay? So as you can see, it is running. And yeah, and it should detect in a while. The, as you can see, the alarm is in pending state because it takes some time to react. It takes some, uh, maybe we could have configured it in a, in a other, but yeah, it will trigger the alarm soon. So let's see that everything is fine. We should see a, a ticket. The first thing that we should see is a ticket uh, open here. We should see a playbook running here which will open the ticket, and that's it. Let's wait a little bit. Now, the, the alarm is firing, and yeah. It will take a little bit. Any questions at this point? Okay. As you can see, we like we love to play with too many pieces, no? So yeah. <laughs> we have service now, Ansible, OpenShift. I hope it OTF. will work. <laughs> Let me take a look because I'm not sure if everything is fine or not. Okay. Mm, it's, it's taking more time than I was expecting, okay? Let's wait a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna restart maybe the container because maybe it is something going wrong here. Okay, I will restart the container because <laughs> we had some problems with the network this morning and you know, a live demo sometimes. Okay. Mm. Okay, I will start again, okay? I will delete the file. Mm. 
so we should see the, the I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not, so, I'm not sure what's happening. We should see the alarm disappear. Alert manager is uh, slow sometimes because it is making checks and if he is not sure uh, is the, if the alarm is disappeared, he will be uh, still trying to to check. We can see the metrics here. So it should start to uh, stop triggering the, the alarm soon. There are a lot of steps to happen, so <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, now it's gone again. So we will try uh, uh, again, and if not, we can pass to the next. I hope it will work, and if not, I'm not sure what happens, okay? So we have our, our decision environment here listening. I think everything is fine. I'm gonna fill the drive again, the disk. Okay. So let's see. If you want, if you have any questions in the meantime, I can. Nothing? Okay. <laughs> Things happen. Wait a little bit because I want them to see them. <laughs> yeah, can you speak a little bit? Yeah. You can have uh, different uh, sources and different rules and different conditions on its rules. No, no, I understood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, you can. There are two different objects that you can call from the from the um, even drive and Ansible. You can call a job template and a workflow job template. And also, if you have, for example, a playbook in the container inside the container, you can also trigger the the playbook directly. And you don't need to pass by the automation controller. And you know, 
So yeah, okay, <laughs> no happened <laughs> very quick. Uh, now it worked, okay, but <laughs> okay, let's, let's see what happened because uh, when it happens, happens very quick and we didn't have the chance to see it because. So what happened is uh, the f uh, we executed this, this workflow, okay, this workflow your template. Uh, the first thing that we do is to set the alert in Acknowledge. So um, uh, in order to um, stop receiving alerts from the alert manager, then we extend the physical volume using the DevOps, uh, I mean the GitOps, uh, the Argo CD. So if you can see here, the manifest should be 12 gigabytes right now, okay? So that's good. We should have an incident open here as well. And we should have our rollbook, our uh, PVC updated here. As you can see, we can see the mission here. It's then it starts to 12 gigabytes, OK? So that's it. The first one, I'm sorry for the first. Uh, I think that we had uh, we, we uh, forget to create the alert manager object in the OpenShift. So that's the, that I recreated here. And then it started. Sorry for the first. OK, so let's run a little bit. So basically, what happens is, is that, OK? For the, OK, we will uh, speak a little bit about the, op about the OpenShift um, ADP. Yes, so we introduced a new component in the next demonstration, which is ODP operator. Which ODP operator, we are going to have backups and restores in, in OpenShift. So basically, the operator will allow us the chance to do, to do that. OK, so for the next one, what we will try to do is to uh, create a backup of the object uh, and then we will delete completely the application and EDA should detect the, the drift and should restore the backup, okay? So the first step should be to create a backup. I have a playbook here, which is a, a job template which is able to create a backup in the, in the ADP. Uh, okay, so that's my, my operation, backup, and the application name is app2, okay? Now, in the meantime, in the meantime, we will explain about ODP as well. So I'm going to launch the job template. It should be quick. Yes, well, what we are doing here is to take a backup uh, from the whole damn space, no? So we will have a backup with the application, with the PPC, with the service, and with the route, no? Exactly. So in our uh, stores, we will have the whole damn space uh, back it up. Yeah, so uh, our backup should be here. So that's it. This is the backup we have just created. And I'm going to delete the namespace, OK? This is APP2. So. OK, so same in history. Uh, our manager should detect that we don't have the APP2 namespace and should try to trigger our remediation. In the meantime, maybe, Jose Manuel, do you want to explain a little bit about the ODP? Yes. Uh, with ODP, that we have done is to create an, an S3 bucket running on, on Amazon. So uh, we have here our data protection application because ODP needs the like the Velero controller, no? And well, uh, we have configured here. And it is using uh, an S3 bucket. And well, we are uh, using Copia to, to back up the, the files. And uh, well, that is uh, almost everything for all. We are storing the object in an AWS bucket, yeah? Yes, we have a, um, a backup storage location, which is the connection between Velero and the S3 uh, repository. And, and also, uh, Velero will create for, for us when doing the backup and a repository for the application. No? So if we backup the, the application uh, twice or three times, it will do incremental uh, backups. No? Yeah, OK. So let's continue with, the other <laughs> with our other manager. <laughs> let's see if this time we were lucky or not. OK. So we see that the alarm is impending state. Yet. We are looking for this specific alert here. Uh, if we check our rule book again, we see that we have a rule here that is listening for this kind of alerts. It's 
ABP2 namespace is missing. And in the case that we see this variable in the, um, in the event, it will trigger this playbook, OK, the Open Service Now incident, which I hope is about to happen. <laughs> OK. Let's wait a little bit. OK. In this case, when the trigger uh, goes up, uh, that we are going to do is to create a, a Velero restore. No? So we are, we are going to create the, the opposite direction. Yeah, we I will connect to the S3 bucket, and we will retrieve the, the application data and also with the data of the PVC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with the ADI today, but everything is going wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next time I will say, uh, record a video <laughs> because I think it's easier. <laughs> OK. Yeah, this one is also stuck. I don't know why. It is firing here, but this also stuck. Okay, uh, we don't have enough time, I think, right? I can trigger the, the scene manually. It's not the same, but at least we will see what will happen. Uh, okay, so. It, uh, this is the workflow that uh, it was supposed to to restore the um, the backup. I have a little bit of hope yet, but no. Um, this uh, this workflow template is calling the two uh, two um, job templates. The first one you already saw before it will open an open shift mm -hmm. an open a service now incident, and the other one will restore the the application. So I will launch it ma manually because we don't we didn't ha we don't have enough time, I think. And yeah, I think uh, there is something wrong in my alert manager, and it's not uh, triggering the alerts properly or something. So yeah, I'm gonna launch the restore. So yeah, we should see the the thing here. In um, already been. So we have the restore in progress. And in a while, we should see the. Um, as you can see, the, the namespace is created now. If we go to the pods. We see the pods running here. We have our PVC created as well. And yeah, I'm sorry for the demo effect. Ah, I'm sorry. So guys, if you have any questions, we are happy to, to re respond. Yeah. Can you can you repeat? Sorry. Yeah, we use the the Ansible. Ah, for the streaming. Ah, you are asking if the Ansible controller is deployed inside the OpenShift cluster, right? Yeah. So we use the the operator, the Ansible automation platform operator, to deploy the the cluster. So uh, we have an operator hub in OpenShift that there is, it is plenty of applications here, so you can install from here. And it is installed in the AAP namespace. So we have the Ansible Automation platform, which includes the Ansible controller, the Ansible Automation hub, and uh, even driven Ansible. So yeah. Any other questions? OK. So thank you for coming. We are sorry for the <laughs> for the problems we had, and um, and yeah. Uh, all from if you, our side. Yeah, if you want to see the um, the code of the demo, this is the repository 
which I use it to, to store the, um, the code. And yeah, but we don't have any other questions, so. <laughs> ah, we have another one. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. No, no. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Ansible rulebook is an open source project. Uh, you can just execute it in a container or in your own laptop or wherever you want. And there are also a lot of um, source plugins available in the community. So you can use the uh, uh, even Raven Ansible to trigger the rulebooks or you can trigger wherever you want. So yeah. Thank you. <laughs>